And I want to share with you then on the power of mentoring and succession. The power of mentoring and succession. We're going to focus on how to secure your legacy. How to live beyond the grave. One of the saddest things I discovered is that you need a tombstone. People who are successful don't need tombstones. The reason why we need tombstones is because we were so useless on earth that wherever they planted us, they have to mark the spot to remind us that you used to be here. I want to challenge you from this day forward, and I believe I was sent here from my country to tell you to live in such a way from this point on that you wouldn't need a tombstone. Everybody say legacy. legacy. I want to begin with a statement that may shock you. And that is, Jesus Christ never built a building. You know, most of us uh, in our leadership passion, we, we believe that if we can build structures, that they will become our legacy. But I remember when I went to visit Haiti after the earthquake, and I saw a 160-year-old city collapse in rubble. I walked away with an awareness that your legacy should never be in buildings. Jesus never built a building. I want to talk about building a legacy for the next generation. How to secure your future. So Jesus never built a building. Do you know why? Because he built people. People outlast buildings. He focused on selecting a few people and poured his life into them. Write this down, please. The greatest investment in life is in people. One of the things that attracted me to Dr. Morris Cirillo, being born in a country where I was born under the oppression of colonialism. Like some of you, we were colonized by an empire. We were considered second-class citizens in our own country. And similar to apartheid, we were considered not equal to those who oppressed us. Matter of fact, 4% of our population controlled 90% of all the wealth. And one of the things I noticed is that they never taught us to be leaders. As a matter of fact, they taught us to be dependent. This is very serious. And this is why most people from Africa and Asia, Central America, South America, the Caribbean, who were former colonies, have difficulty accepting power. They don't know what to do with leadership. That's why they abuse it. They are not taught to be leaders. And so they have a spirit of intimidation, fear. They apologize for being successful. They are afraid to succeed because they were taught to be falsely humble. What attracted me to Dr. Morris Cirillo years ago, before he even knew me, was when I read one of his magazines and he said, the Lord told me to raise up an army in the nations of Africa, South America, and throughout the world, whose work would exceed mine. That was new to me. Because most missionaries that came to our countries did not expect us to take over. They expected us to constantly look to them and depend on them. 
And here was a man wanting to work himself out of a job by raising up the natives to take charge of their own destiny. This is a divine mandate and he deserves a hand for that. You know, most great missionaries that come to our countries, they, they love to have us almost worship them. And they hide information from us so that there's a spirit of awe around them. But this man decided, I'm going to train people. I'm going to teach them what I know. I'm going to teach them how to cast a demon themselves, how to preach the word themselves, how to become leaders themselves. This is a spirit of legacy. Write this down, please. We build buildings to build people. You shouldn't build a building to put your name on it. Every building you build should produce people who are leaders. Dr. Morris Rollo and I spoke privately behind the curtain about seven years ago when I came to this meeting and there was a trailer in the back where he was and I walked in there and he was chatting with me and I said, sir, if you die today, what would happen to all the knowledge you have? I'll never forget the conversation. He looked at me and his eyes became water over. I said, sir, maybe you need to build an institution so you can re reproduce people after yourself. And I was so happy the next year that he came back talking about the center in California, building an institute to train people. Because people are more important than buildings. Jesus never left a building in his name. He left people. Write this down. True legacy is in people, not in projects, programs, and buildings. And Jesus knew that. If you study all the great leaders in history, true leaders, they always focused on people. Elijah focused on Elisha and he gave him his cloak. David focused on Solomon and he gave him his crown. Jesus focused on Peter and he gave him the church. I wonder who you are focusing on. This is the spirit of legacy. I want to suggest a couple of things to you. True leaders are the key to a new world. And nothing happens without leadership. Nothing changes without leadership. Nothing improves without leadership. Nothing succeeds without leadership. Nothing progresses unless someone takes leadership. Leadership is the key to transforming the world. So if we're going to be successful, we need true leaders. True leaders do not focus on themselves. They focus on other people. And this is why we need to remember this principle. Here it is. Good leaders employ others but great leaders deploy others. Good leaders employ other people, but great leaders deploy. You know, Jesus, when he was about to leave the earth, he made a statement, it was a legacy statement. He said, all authority is given unto me, in heaven and in earth and under the earth. I have all the authority. And then he says, therefore, you go. He transferred it to them. 
authority and power is for distribution. He knew that if he did not distribute the authority, everything would die with him. So life is about distribution. Here's another principle to remember. Leadership is not measured by how many people serve you. It's measured by how many people you serve. You know, I've watched people in the ministry walk around the world and they got these large entourages and people shining their shoe for them and carrying their Bibles. And somehow there seemed to be a spirit which says, the more people that serve me measure how important I am. But the Bible is opposite to that. The greatest among you shall be who? The servant of everyone, not them serving you. That's why my only entourage is my wife. And she's my bodyguard. That's all I need. Because your wife is your most precious jewel. She protects me from you. Shout hallelujah in the back. Uh, I love my wife. So the, the goal of leadership is to serve people. True leaders also learn from others, but they never become them. It's important for you to be a student and learn from other people. True leaders are never graduated from the school of life. They are constantly learning. True leaders are also those who lead others to leadership. And that's what legacy is about. It's about producing leaders, not maintaining followers. In other words, managers think of the next position, but leaders think of the next generation. I wonder if you would, in the next partners meeting, bring your son and daughter. Maybe you should expose them to this atmosphere. Where's your, where's your son? My son is out there at the table. We took them with us around the world, exposed them to what we were doing, and now they want to do it themselves. No pressure. When you mentor people, you transfer the anointing to them by association. Who are you mentoring? Who are you training? Matter of fact, the greatest act of leadership is mentoring. Write that down. The greatest act of leadership is what? Mentoring. Here's why. If what you learn, achieve, accumulate, or accomplish dies with you, then you are a fail failure. All this great work that you've accomplished, all the knowledge that you have accumulated, all of the great projects you have achieved, if it all dies when you die, you failed. And that's why the passion of this ministry is training. It's about transfer. It's about building people. Mentoring, therefore, is the manifestation of the highest level of maturity in leadership. Only mature people want others to be greater than they are. A person who is insecure and don't know who they really are will never train people. They will oppress people. I love the words of Jesus, the greatest leader of all times. Let me quote what he said. He said, it is better for you that I go away. 
Some folks never want to leave. This is my position. I am the pastor. I am the prophet. I am the apostle. I am the evangelist. Oh, shut up. You're going to die. So train somebody now. Clap. Mature people create people greater than themselves. Words of Jesus. If I do not go away, you will not do greater works than I have done. But if I go away, he says, you will do greater works. He wanted his disciples to be greater because he was secure in himself. To leave a legacy, you must be matured. Because true leaders do not focus on self-preservation or self-protection. You know, there are people in the world, and I'm talking to some of you in the back as well, who protects their position from everybody else. You know, we get this, uh, this idea that God has blessed me with this place and this is my spot. Every spot is temporary. Tell your neighbor, you will die one day. So train your replacement now. Clap. Legacy is about preserving your future, not protecting your past. So what kind of leaders do we need? First of all, we need leaders who are not preoccupied with protecting themselves, but who are more concerned about pro producing their legacy. We need leaders who think more of the next generation than about the next position in the organization. We need leaders who feel they owe a debt to the future. I have to produce people to preserve this organization. The name of all Roberts is still around. We got students here. I see some of them in this building. I'm one of them. He's gone, but we still live on. And we still call his name because he didn't just produce buildings. He produced people. I think the greatest gift you can give the world is your mentee. We need leaders who are more dedicated to history than they are to money. What do I mean by that? You are more concerned about producing people who will preserve the organization than you are about becoming rich. I think this is why Jesus Christ is still the most successful leader in history. He's been gone for 2,000 years and his company is still moving on. Give God a hand for a great leader. We need leaders who are more interested in people than in private ambition. This is the heart of a true leader. This is a photograph of me and Mr. Nelson Mandela. When I first met this man, my life changed. It was a private dinner. About 18 people was in the room. I was invited to be a part of that dinner by my prime minister. And when I shook his hands in that photograph, my whole body shook because his hands felt like rock. And I was startled. And he smiled, Mr. Nelson Mandela. And then we sat down at the table to eat. He was two chairs away from me, so he leaned over and he says, young man, are you okay? I said, yes, sir. He said, no, you're not okay. I said, yes, I am. He said, no. He said, I guess you're wondering why my hands are so hard. And I was embarrassed. I said, sir, I guess so. He said, well, for 18 years, I, had, I was given a hatchet and a maul, and I had to crack rocks, and my hands became a blister, and then they became a complete callus. In prison, I had to crack rocks for almost 20 years. And then he said, this is the price of freedom.
I never forgot that moment. I walked away from that dinner with a prayer. My prayer was, oh Lord, make my hands hard. Let me pay a price for greatness. Here's what he said to me that night. You want to write this down. He says, true leaders do not seek followers. Followers are attracted to true leaders. True leaders do not seek followers. Followers are attracted to true leaders. This is why great leaders never look for followers. Dr. Morris Cirillo did not look for you. You are attracted to this ministry. And some of you have been a part of this ministry for 10 years, 20 years, 15 years, and you've been faithful because somehow you saw a genuine man who has your interest as priority. This is leadership. Leadership wants to meet your needs, not you meet their needs. He also said this to me. He said, leadership is not a right. It is a privilege. People don't have to follow you. So you must appreciate them when they decide to follow you. Respect them. Build them. Invest in them. Because great leaders always respect those who submit to them. Not abuse them. What a man. The greatest failure in leadership is unsuccessful success. And what I mean by that is that we are weak in mentoring other people. One of our weaknesses is that we are more concerned about protecting ourselves from other people rather than developing other people. This ministry is a great ministry because it wants to develop people. I, I look at the building that is being constructed. Morris Cirillo World Outreach. He called it the Legacy Pavilion. It's a place where people are trained. After he's gone, he'll still be training people. His books will live beyond his grave. His ideas that God gave him will live beyond the cemetery. I wonder what are you doing to preserve what God has taught you? Who are you producing? Life is about producing other people. I want to say this and write this down, please. The greatest obligation of true leadership is to transfer your deposit to the next generation. That's your greatest obligation. Leadership success is measured by the success of your successor. No matter how great you may have been, if you didn't produce a successor, you are a failure. This is true of parents, preachers, and politicians. If you are a parent, my question is, are you mentoring your children? Not just parenting them, but mentoring them to preserve what you've built. Can you turn all that you've built over to your son and he will not sell it? Did you train your daughter to appreciate the value that you've built for the last 50 years? Legacy is about preserving all that you've accomplished through other people in other words success without a successor is failure no matter how successful you are if you didn't produce a successor you failed and Jesus knew I have to produce successors he spent three and a half years training those 11 men When he left, his work grew in his absence. Isn't it incredible that after he was gone, his organization ex expanded? 
I wonder if your ministry will die when you die. Or will it expand because you train your replacement? There should not be fight for the spoils when you die. There should be a transition. Because any leadership that only serves its generation is destined to fail. I discovered something about God. God is a generational God. Can you write that down somewhere? What did I say? Write that down. You know, I, when I read the Bible, I'm amazed. When God speaks to us, he is not talking to us. He's speaking to our loins. If you read the Bible carefully, God kept on speaking to people's loins. He said, to your seed after you, after your seed after you. He wasn't talking to you. He's talking to the future generations. So when God gives you an instruction, that's not for you. It's for the unborn. You become a steward of God's assignment. God is a generational God. So if your vision dies with you, you failed. Legacy is about living beyond your grave. It's about producing people who will become greater than you. You know why you're quiet? You didn't think about this stuff. And you are getting older. What are you producing? Who are you producing? Have you identified a young woman or a young man that you will spend the next 10 years pouring your life into? Will you train them into what you know and take them to meetings so they can see and be exposed to what you are exposed to? You know, Jesus was incredible. He trained his disciples at different levels. He had 12, but he had three different groups in that 12. He had nine, he had three, and then he had one. And depending on what he wanted to mentor them in, he would separate them. You remember one time he went on the Mount of Transfiguration. Only took three. Why? He wanted to expose them to that meeting he had. With Moses and Elijah. And those three men saw Moses and Elijah. And they saw Jesus in his full glory. And then he said, when you go down, don't tell anybody what you saw. Why? That's only for you to experience right now. He was mentoring them. One time he wanted to raise a little girl from the dead. He put everybody out and just took three with him. And he said, I only want you to see how to raise the dead. Who are you mentoring? A partnership meeting is really isolating you for a few days to expose you to the transfiguration. To let you be exposed to speakers that impacted his life. Information that will advance you. Music that will inspire you. He brought you from around the world here to isolate you on this mountain in Orlando so that he can teach you things that he learned. That's building a legacy. As I leave you today, I want you to remember this, write this down. Leadership is not a sprint. It is a marathon relay. Leadership is a relay, not a sprint. You know, when you run a relay, the most important part of a relay is not running. The most important part of a relay is passing the baton. No matter how fast you run, 
no matter how many people you exceed in running, if you drop the baton during the passing, you are disqualified and everybody else is disqualified. In other words, the most important part of a race is not running, it's passing. Dr. Morris Cirillo feels right now a consciousness that I must be passing now the baton. I want to show you something. Can you come here, my beloved? I want to show you how you're supposed to run in leadership. Turn around, face that way. Now, when there's a relay race, there are usually four runners. And the first runner runs out of the block. You put your hand back like this, but you never look back. Because if you look back, you can waste time. So the, 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 the runner who's supposed to take the baton puts his hand back, but never looks back. Why? He expects to receive. You know, there's some young people in your church who've been running that way for the last three years. And you wouldn't transfer. Uh-oh, getting quiet now. And they are running with the expectation that you will transfer to them. Now, if you transfer, some people let you hold it, but they won't let it go either. So you got to drag them, wait, all this weight they got to drag. Don't look now, but that's the person sitting right next to you. You wouldn't give up the leadership. Jesus said, it is better for you that I go. Because if I don't go, you won't take the next leg. One last thing I want to show you. Once I give him the baton and he runs, when it's all over, no one person wins. Come on, clap your hands louder than that. Everybody wins. Who are you passing to? Or are you passing at all? You know, I had a dream. And it was a dream that I will never forget. I dreamt that I was at a funeral. And there was a casket up front with a dead body in it. And it was the body of an athlete. And his pitcher was next to it, you know, strong guy. And he was a relay runner. And everybody was filing past the casket, paying their last respects. And then came my turn. I got up and I walked past the casket. And when I got there, I was shocked. I saw this beautiful body of an athlete in the casket. He had his hands over his chest, and in his hand was a baton. Yeah. And then I woke up and I was sweating. And the Holy Spirit said to me, this is the picture of most leaders. They'd rather die with it. Will the young people have to pry it out of your hands in your casket or will you give it up? It is better for you that I go away. 
if I do not go away, you will not do greater works. I just came to chat with you for a few minutes. What you hear now could change your life forever. I want you to go home and find a few people that you will say to them, I want to mentor you for the next four years. I want to teach you everything I learned. I want to give you everything God gave me. I want to transfer my cloak to you. I want to give you my experience and I want to teach you what God taught me. I want to make you greater than myself. This is the heart of leadership. It's not winning your leg that's important. It's passing the baton. The minute you hit the age of 40, it's time to start passing. Because 40 is a generation. Take a deep breath. So if you're 40 years old, it's already too late. You got to catch up. Jesus began his work at age 30. He started early. I just want to encourage you to remember the spirit of this great ministry. The ultimate goal of leadership is not to maintain followers, but to produce leaders. True leadership is measured by the success of the followers and the decreasing dependency of the followers. You know, let me just say this before I pray for you, because I'm going to pray an anointing on you tonight. Your goal in life as a parent or a leader in any capacity is to destroy the dependency of the people around you. If you are a successful pastor, for example, your prayer lines should be very short. Okay, let me try it again. If you are an effective pastor, there shouldn't be hardly anyone coming for prayer on Sunday mornings. Because if you taught them properly, they'll pray for themselves. But you see, there's a problem. We feel that if people don't depend on us, then we are not valuable. So we are so insecure, we need people to need us. You are sick. <laughs> the greatest act of Jesus was leaving. He left. And when he left, the disciples exploded the ministry. He never went outside Palestine. But when he died, they went everywhere. You are great as a leader when they don't need you. Oh boy. That's why the goal of this ministry is legacy. He's saying, look, I want to give you my cloak. A few years ago, Dr. Morris Cirillo showed us a colorful coat. Some of you didn't understand it. He was saying, look, I'm trying to get rid of something. I'm going to die. And I don't want to take the cloak with me. Make people greater than yourself. And you will live forever. They will call your name every day. Mr. Nelson Mandela was in prison for 24 years. But he only spent one term as president. He mentored a young man named Mbeki. And he gave up the presidency to the young man after one term. This is historic. Because you see, true leaders do not seek power. They seek to empower clap yeah. 
And that's what Mr. Morris Cirillo is trying to teach you. Lay hands on people yourself. Speak in tongues yourself. Cast out demons yourself. Heal the sick yourself. Raise the dead yourself. Preach the word yourself. You are here to reduce your dependency. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's legacy. Make yourself increasingly unnecessary. Can I say it again? True leaders make themselves increasingly unnecessary. Jesus was successful because he left. His greatest act was leaving. And I've seen people in churches I went to visit who are 95 years old and they're still in the pulpit. They need advice. You are old. They can hardly stand up and they're trying to preach. They can't even speak English anymore. They are sick. Write this down. Never confuse your position with your value. Your position doesn't make you valuable. And the problem is if you depend on your position to be valuable, then you better never lose the position. I saw a guy the other day went to speak to his church. He could hardly climb the steps. He was like, you know, uh, Brother Monroe, thank you so much for coming, praise the Lord. I'm sitting there going, you fired. <laughs> the young people sitting in there hurting like horses in a gate, saying, give me this church with five people in it. Yes. You're killing the church. Yes. Yes. Oh boy, I better stop right now. I better stop right now. I'm going to stop right now. I'm getting in trouble right now. Everybody say, pass it on. Say it loud, pass it on. It's more important to know when to leave than to stay. Legacy. Finally, and I say this with all my heart, Matthew 17, Jesus went to the mountain to pray and his disciples went to a little village and they met a man with a demon possessed son you remember the story and they brought the disciples to the disciples a little boy to heal him and the bible says that they began to pray but the demon would not come out they were from Orlando you I lose you the devil said which one bind or loose I'm confused <laughs> please buy this CD please very important CD take this home listen to it ten times because you got to get your act together stop living for yourself so Jesus came down from the mountain and he saw this crowd in the town he comes and he says what's going on and someone said to him uh, there's a guy there with a demon possessed boy so he went to the man and the man says uh, my son has a demon I brought him to your disciples they could not cast him out now I want you to read the story carefully Jesus did not deal with the demon first he did not deal with the man he didn't deal with the boy he rebuked his disciples what did he say he says how long shall I be with you now what does that mean what he's saying is, look, I want to get out of here. My God. So will you please learn fast? <laughs> Come on, give him a hand. That's, that's, that's a good piece of clap. I don't want to be here. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. This is a very important question. When Mr. Morris Cirillo die, will there still be a partnership meeting in this building as big as this? That's the question. Come on. Will the transfer be so correct that it'll be bigger than this meeting? Or are you just attached to the personality? Can I 
suggest to you that great leaders attach people to vision, not personality. This vision is more important than the visionary. You didn't join Morris Cirillo. You joined the vision of this ministry. Come on, give him praise. The vision will outlive the visionary. And that's why he has a legacy center, a training school, an institute to train young leaders, to maximize ministers. Why? He wants to reproduce leaders greater than himself. What are you doing in your house? In your ministry? In your business? Who are you producing in your company to take your place? I submit to you that Jesus' question is still the question. How long must I be with you? Will you learn this? Will you get it? Feel the anointing of God. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of God. I feel the anointing of God. So let me close with this statement. Out loud, read it together. Go. The first act of a true leader is to identify your replacement and begin mentoring them. Hmm. Your assignment has a shelf life. You have to know when to transfer. The Holy Spirit has created this moment for you to become great. You become great by reproducing people greater than yourself. That's what legacy is about. It's really not about the leader. It's about the leaders. Tell me, why are you afraid to go on vacation? Some people are afraid to go on vacation because they may lose their jobs. That's a sign of insecurity. Some pastors kill themselves because they're afraid to leave the church. Because there's a young man who could preach better than them. And last time he went away, the young man preached and they bought more of his CDs. Oh, come on, pastor, sit up straight. But you see, pastors, listen to me. If you produce a young man better than you, don't get jealous. Take the credit. Don't be afraid of people being greater than you. Produce them. It is better for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, you will not do greater works. You are my legacy. Hallelujah.